Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to Conversations with Calvin, We the Species, uh, and uh, it's late in the afternoon on Mother's Day. And, and I'm with uh, Wajid Hassan. And uh, as I just told Wajid before I clicked the button to record, uh, I've been looking forward to this like a whole week. And, and then I went ahead uh, to prepare and be a good journalist. I went ahead and I ordered Wajid's book from Amazon, uh, The Struggles, uh, The Struggle for World Sanity. I'm, I'm, I'm actually half done reading it. Uh, it has gripped me. Uh, and uh, what's really amazing about this, uh, uh, there's no formal, we were just saying that before uh, we recording, uh, there's no, we're just, we're just going to talk because he's so interesting. By the way, the, the title, so you all know it, uh, uh, the title, uh, uh, Wajid Hassan, Metaphysics Healing, Acting Comedy Teaching, Author, UFOs, uh, Mount Kilimanjaro. So you can all, uh, you can all kind of process that and, and, um, and, and we're going to uh, kind of unpack that as we, we kind of chat. Uh, the other thing I wanted to say is another brief commercial uh, after the struggle, uh, uh, that commercial, and an another commercial for you all out there. Do me a favor. Um, please uh, hit that subscribe button and subscribe to this channel. Uh, it helps this whole thing grow. So uh, without further ado, and I'm just going to turn on a light here, so uh, a better light. I actually have an official light, which may not may not be working, but I'm gonna. Okay, it's not working anyway. Um, it's my great pleasure to introduce Waji Hassan and say something. You know, a little intro. Thanks, uh, Calvin. It's a pleasure to be on your show. Um, yeah, we've uh, we kind of hit it off pretty pretty good. There's there's uh, there's something you know about the energy field or auras that we have, and then some people you meet you just instantly mesh with, and then there's other people you meet you kind of feel kind of uncomfortable, and then there's other people you just stay conservative. But it seems to me like I've known you, like you've been a friend of mine, and I ha I've hardly met you. Um, so and we were discussing about uh coincidences and uh is it coincidence or is it it was is it meant to be and uh like you i'm a strong believer that the, there is no such thing, thing as coincidence and everything is meant to be according to our own personal experiences that we need to learn in order to be, to you know gain experience on this planet wouldn't you agree i completely agree and one of the great, uh, and I guess, I guess you have to be on this earth for a long time, I guess, to begin to understand uh, about uh, coincidences um, um, and the fact that you meant, uh, the fact that we met and how we met uh, is relatively extraordinary and it's beyond coincidence. And, and you know, we met uh, on, uh, on social media and it was in, you know, instant chemistry. And yes, uh, I agree, Wajid. I feel I've known you a long time, and maybe I have. I remember, I remember this one woman I met, and I knew instantly that we've been. I'm a firm believer in, in reincarnation. I think, uh, I think if the truth of reincarnation was really taught to the schools and the whole world. I think this, this world would be a lot better. People would think twice before they went out to war to kill somebody con thinking, considering that they could be their parent or mother or father or sister or brother in a previous life. Um, I think that truth is slowly coming to surface. Uh, nothing can stop that because it is, it is a universal truth. And uh, some of the religions have suppressed it and, uh, the people who suppressed it eventually will be replaced by people who will uh, rise up and say this is a, an actual truth that needs to be taught, uh, which will explain the inequality that's occurring around the world. And so I met this one woman, and I just knew, 
I just got this feeling that I, I knew her as a monk in a previous life. Wow. Just, just, wow. and we became, we, we became instant friends and we've been instant fr friends now for over 20 years and just, wow. well, just by that one meeting. So yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, you, you, you talked about, and again, this is all unrehearsed. We're just, we're just chatting here folks. So, um, but you, you did talk about, uh, you know, past life and, and every once in a while, something flashes, flashes by me. And, and I, I see myself a long, long, long time ago, uh, in, in kind of a valley in the Middle East, uh, listening to someone speak, um, you know, about 2000 years ago, something like that. Um, and, and I don't know where that, that came from, but I just, um, I just feel that I, I was there and, and, and I, I don't go anywhere with that, that feeling. Uh, one of the things that have brought, uh, Wajid and I, uh, together, you know, our spiritual things, uh, paranormal things, um, journey wise, um, uh, I've had some paranormal experiences. I, I thought once, and, and I'm just a regular guy living in New Jersey and I go to Rutgers football and basketball games. I'm, I'm just a regular guy. And I always try to get that across. I'm there's uh, but you know, I've had an interesting journey these past 10 years. Um, so, um, uh, and, but a while back ago, I, uh, I, I, I could swear I, I saw uh, a UFO. It wasn't a close encounter. Uh, it was close encounter of the first kind. But you've had some experiences with that. Uh, why don't you just, uh, and, and by the way, UFOs uh, are really in the news lately. I don't know how many people out there uh, are aware, but there's all kinds of stuff going on with government opening up millions of files and uh, about sightings and contacts and all kinds of other stuff. Uh, and, and there's all kinds of ways to think about that. Um, but why don't you share, I mean, you've had some UFO stuff and, and, and that's why it's in here. Um, uh, so why don't you kind of uh, share some of that, Wajid? Well, um, I'm glad you brought that up. I know you were, you were mentioning uh, watching Dr. Stephen Greer's documentary on uh, Close Encounters of the uh, Fifth Kind, which was a very interesting documentary. And I think, uh, you know, UFOs, they've been seen on, in the skies uh, for the last 18 million years that we've been on this, inhabiting this planet. And they're not going away. Uh, these extraterrestrials, craft are monitoring us are looking out kind of looking out for us um and, and more and more these things are opening our people are wisening up now um i think there's been a cover-up for sure and i think that uh our people's intelligences uh, are being insulted now when when people like nasa and, and other government agencies say that there's no such thing as extraterrestrial life and life on other planets and you know, uh, I think Time, was it Time Magazine a few years ago, had this front cover page that said, uh, are we alone in the universe? I mean, how can you insult our in intelligence like that? And so, especially the younger generation are wisening up. Uh, they're more educated in many, many ways. And, and the world is opening up uh, through the internet, through social media. And... Um, uh, my experience with the, with the UFO, again, you know, this was something out of the blue. It, 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 I, I wasn't a big avid UFO um, um, person. I, I wasn't into, into UFOs. I didn't, it wasn't something that interested me, but it happened in London. It happened when I was at the age of 18. And uh, the, the, the experience was so deep and so profound. First of all, I didn't talk about it to anybody for many many years because it was my own personal experience uh, and I know you've had some experiences with you know relatives from that you've known and those are very profound experiences which generally we we don't share because they, because they're very personal right. and so 
that's what happened to me. I, I, I was in, I was, I was working in London and I had this strong premonition that I had to be somewhere. Um, and, and I couldn't, it was like a, a mental impulse or a, gu a guiding mental hand that was telling me that I had to be somewhere and I couldn't figure it out. So, um, on the third day, I couldn't ignore it anymore. And I, I got out a map of England and I started tracing my hand, finger across uh, the British Isles and trying to pinpoint where I needed to be. And my finger stopped at a place uh, in near Stonehenge, a town called Salisbury. And just outside of Salisbury was a place called um, Clearwater. And I just, the feelings I got was I knew I had to be at that particular place uh, Friday midnight wow. that week. Wow. Again, don't ask me why. It just, it just, those were the feelings. So on that Friday night, I took the Greyhound, as they call it in America, they call it coach in England, and went from London to Salisbury. I arrived there at 10 30 and walked these uh, dark country lane, country roads till, till midnight in the pitch black. And then finally hopped over this fence by this farm near a pond. And exactly at midnight, I looked up and, uh, from the, uh, from the, um, uh, from the South to the North, this circle, silvery circle, this shaped object just slowly, you know, uh, went over the sky and I thought, well, I guess I'm in the right place. This is a sign. Um, then at 1 30 AM, another silvery disc shaped object, uh, went the other side from the east uh, to uh, from the west i'm sorry to, to the east and to me uh, those that those two sightings signified the sign of the cross I, I don't i don't know why but to me you know the cross is a very ancient sign uh goes back way before christianity it's a sign of ascension of man to 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 the spirit of you know to the divine spirit and so I thought that was a very interesting sy symbolic sign that these two UFOs had shown me. And then exactly at three o'clock, this larger craft, this was not a psychic apparition. This was a physical, uh, you know, uh, occurrence. And this much larger craft came, came hovering over me and stopped about a hundred feet uh, above me. And this uh, white uh, flare of light came out from the hull and this tremendous amount of spiritual energy uh, went through me. And I, I had, I, I was in this kind of like a mystic, uplifting, beautiful state of mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the communication or the mental communication I got was that the beings that were in this spacecraft were not only uh, advanced scientifically millions of years ahead of us, but also sp very, very spiritual beings. And uh, I don't know how long it lasted, but the, but then it stopped and, and the craft silently hovered away. Mm -hmm. And so that was, uh, again, something that was very profound for me. It, 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 it gave to me the, the indication that the people who control the flying saucers are, are, are very advanced beings. And they, they know about the, what's going on on planet Earth right now. And they really care about us, especially in these days. And so that's, that's what I wanted to. And, and again, it was something I've never really discussed till I wrote the book um, because it was a profound experience. But uh, it, it, it's just to let your listeners know that there's hope uh, uh, in the skies above us, that uh, we are being monitored and looked after by beings who really, really care about us. You know, it's funny, the media, uh, our, our media uh, depicts uh, UFOs and flying sources uh, in, in ways, in, in War of the Worlds, Orson Welles, in War of the Worlds, uh, way back in the 50s, that movie, and then Tom Cruise uh, did War of the Worlds here in New Jersey, as a matter of fact. Uh, and, and all the depictions that we have basically that they're evil and they're bad and there's going to be a war. I think it's carefully, it's been carefully planned that way. So that there's the, when, when that there's talk of extraterrestrials, there's this sense of fear. Um, I think it's deliberate. 
um, because I don't think the, if if people realize that it's the other way around, uh, people would be looking up to the skies and they then they would, would be looking up to the media or the governments of the world who, who have unfortunately controlled the masses uh, with with the hypnotized brainwashing that we've had for centuries. And so th those that tide is changing. And um, trust me, if they wanted to take over the world, they could. Yeah. So uh, they could. Do you ever? Uh, um, uh, do you ever uh, contemplate the fact that maybe we were planted here by them? Uh, we weren't planted here by them. Um, um, the 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 yogi master that I follow uh, in English, Doctor King. Yeah, uh, he uh, uh, he was uh, somebody I decided to follow at the age of sixteen. Um, I uh, I was in England at the time, and you know, I, in my in my private life, I was raised in the Islamic faith as a Muslim. Uh, went to uh, to the mosque, read the Quran, did the Arabic prayers, and uh, which I really enjoyed. And at the same time, I was going to a Church of England schools where I was reading the Bible and singing hymns and carols, which I really enjoyed. So I didn't see any distinction between uh, the two, I two ideologies. I, I, I just thought there were uh, two, two different paths to the one divine Correct. principle. Correct. And uh, so uh, nothing against Islam or Christianity or any other religion. I, I totally respect all religions, but I just found something that was... Um, uh, something that I, I felt, again, a premonition from the past. Um, and when I met Dr. King, I, I knew that he was uh, not only a yogi master, but a gen genuine contactee. That's uh, Dr. With, George King. Yes, Dr. Okay. George King. Uh, and just to give you a brief history of Dr. King, Dr. George King, um, in his early 20s, he was a section leader for the uh, London Fire Brigade uh, during wow. World War II, where they wow. had the nazi blitz over england and he was part of search and rescue and he had the unfortunate task of picking up pieces of dead children and it really bothered him the suffering uh of why all this suffering occurring in the world and after the war again for him premonitions from a from a previous life he got into yoga not just hatha yoga but deep into um pranayama yoga, mantra yoga, meditation, to the point where he was practicing yoga for eight to 10 hours a day mm -hmm. while still maintaining his job as a London cab driver. And he did that for 10 years till he reached uh, high levels of consciousness like samadhi, people call cosmic consciousness, where he could raise the power of kundalini up to high psychic centers. And it was very interesting that at that time, then he was contacted uh, by the space intelligences when he reached a certain high stage of evolution so that they could con they could converse with him based on his high vibrations because mm -hmm. uh, they couldn't just contact any earth man, uh, but somebody who could raise their vibrations to their vibrations. Wow. Um, and so um, in the early 60s, Dr. King wrote this book called The Nine Freedoms. Um, um, this is coming back to uh, your question about what, uh, are we, were we planted? I just have to kind of go the long way around so, okay. that so that people understand exactly uh, why we're here at this particular time. And then in the early 60s, he wrote a book called The Nine Freedoms. And uh, in there, uh, he received uh, cosmic transmissions about the evolution of mankind, of where mankind is going, but also... Uh, he, he put down the true history of, of mankind uh, as he saw it. Now, uh, a yogi master has tremendous powers. Uh, they can do things like levitate or go, you know, dematerialize through walls. They can have tremendous healing powers. Mm -hmm. And one thing that uh, my master could do, he could look at your aura and, uh, you know, we all have an aura, an energy field, psychic senses, and he could study your aura. And, and, and in the aura is, is, a, is a total history of all your past lives. And he, can, he could 
any yogi master can see your past lives easily and determine your present and and pos and not possibly your and also your future. Uh, he looked at my aura once and uh, validated a previous life that I was in. Now, on a much larger scale, Calvin, um, a, a yogi master can also project from the physical body in his astral body, and you know this earth we know as you know, is not just a cold piece of rock. She's a beautiful living uh, goddess. And she also has an aura, which I think the uh, in Hindu and Buddhist philosophies has been referred to as the Akashic records. And Dr. King was able to, in, in a, again, in high state of consciousness, project from his body and read the Akashic records, uh, which outlined the true history of mankind. And uh, if, if, if I can quickly go through that quickly with you, it'll give you an indication of why we're here at this time. Mm -hmm. But he said that over 18 million years ago, uh, we were actually resident on another planet uh, in this solar system that orbited between Mars and Jupiter by the name of Maldek. And he said Maldek was a highly uh, uh, spiritually and techni technically advanced um, planet uh, he said that robots took care of all the menial tasks so it was highly technical and we could control the weather we had an abundance of food and we lived in kind of utopia um i think the bible talks about adam and eve and and, and the garden of eden the fall you know um and and even though to me that's just a fairy story it has a fairy story with a tremendous moral implications because what dr king said was on Maldek, there was a group of scientists and something, this, uh, this, this temptation of greed and power and the lust for power got onto them and they created this uh, atomic bomb, which he said was 10,000 times more powerful than the, than, the, than, the, than the bomb that we use on earth. And in their greed and lust for power, they completely destroyed the planet Maldek, which is now the asteroid belt. Wow. Um, and scientists are, are, are now agreeing that the asteroid belt was actually a planet at one time that blew up. Wow. So, um, Interesting. going back to reincarnation, um, we were all released on our different planes of existence, which we do now when we die. And uh, the earth as a planetary goddess was approached and asked uh, because, you know, mankind still had to reincarnate in order to gain those experiences to go back to the back to his own source. And she was approached and asked if she would hold up her evolution and allow these atomic mutants to reincarnate upon earth, which he agreed to. Wow. And so uh, at that time, Dr. King said there was an advanced race of being beings on on earth by the name of adamic man and adamic man agreed to help these atomic mutations as they reincarnated on planet earth over thousands if not millions of years uh adamic man finally left man so we were we're we're actually all extraterrestrials we are not from earth uh, we were we, our home planet was maldek which we blew up 18 million years ago and so uh, over, a, over many, uh, over a number of millions of years, we finally uh, assembled another civilization by the name of Lemuria. And Lemuria, Dr. King said, was again very technically and spiritually advanced. And again, that disease struck and Lemuria went down in an atomic war. And the earth flipped on our axis and down went the civilization of Lemuria. And then millions of years later, another civilization by the name of Atlantis uh, came. And Atlantis, um, <clears throat> some, of the, uh, some of the Vedic texts that go back 20,000 years talk about Vimanas flying, flying ships and, and beams of energy and wars that occurred oh. um, during the Mahabharata. And so Dr. King said that in the time of Atlantis, there was two sides. One made a... Uh, uh, an atomic bomb, which they called the Brahma weapon or weapon of God. And another made a, a controllable uh, atomic ray by the name of Indra's, Indra's dart and sh down fell the civilization of Atlantis. Uh, the earth flipped on her axis and Atlantis, uh, Atlantis fell under the great flood. 
and so coming to modern times, um, you know, just after two of the most horrible purges in the history of mankind, namely World War I and II, um, what do we do? We invented the atom again. And what do we do? We started exploding the atom and hydrogen bombs. And it was known then by the, by the beings, we, we referred to them as cosmic masters, that first of all, the earth was due to die because of this atomic uh, fallout, radiation fallout. And mankind was also doomed. And it was very interesting that in the 50s and 60s, tremendous flying saucer activities around the, around the planet. And uh, what the cosmic, and, and that's the time that Dr. King was also um, contacted by these beings. And what they actually did was they absorbed with their scientific uh, uh, um, instrumentations on their spacecraft, they absorbed a tremendous amount of radioactive fallout and which not only saved the earth, but saved mankind. So we, we pretty much owe everything that we have. So they watch days. over us. Pretty no, much. There, there was a movie, uh, I'm an old movie person. There was a, a movie, and I, I also wanna, uh, I also wanna, because uh, you're so diverse, uh, uh, and this has been heavy, uh, I wanna- uh, I, Well, I wanna, it, 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 was, it was a case of just, you know, the, I wanted to outline exactly why we're here on this planet. So in a way we weren't planted. We, we actually blew up our own planet and we, and we were allowed, not planted, allowed by grace, by the grace of mother earth to be, to be reborn on this planet. So. I, I find it so fascinating, but you, uh, and, and, and people should know, you know, listening to this heavy stuff, um, that you were a comedian. I was. At one time. Yes, you yeah. were. You were a I comedian think I for a long time. And you think worked I uh, comedy clubs out in LA. People need to know that. So uh, talk a little because you're, you're acting, you're a comedian, you're agent. And, and that, was, that connection when you were out in LA led you to the Kilimanjaro to climb it. So, um, so we got to lighten this up a little bit uh, for people. Uh, uh, and, and, and that's the other thing that drew me to you. Uh, uh, if I came back, uh, I would love to come back as a comedian because I think it's a gift to make people laugh. So talk about that. You know, Jade, you're, you're, um, the laugh factory, I think. And yeah, I, um, it's interesting cause I had a technical background, uh, and you know, I was a, a field technician, field service engineer for a number of years. Uh, even in you know, when I was in LA, and um, in 1997, my my um, my yogi master passed away in, in Santa Barbara, and uh, I I was in a I got into a kind of deep depression, couldn't get out of it, and then my wife at the time uh, told me, well, you know, when you were in London in high school, you you went in front of the school at 15 and made everybody laugh, and your drama teacher pleaded with you to get into comedy and acting, so you know uh so to cheer me cheer, cheer myself up i took some stand-up classes and found out i can make people laugh and i started hitting the open mics at the laugh factory comedy store the improv wow. and found out you know that i could make people laugh and and at that time um i had a uh, i'd finished working for the larger corporations i had a little computer repair shop in hollywood near sunset and highland and uh, so I was content to just to do, you know, little open mics, do, do, do little showcasing uh, around the comedy clubs in town. Um, and then this lady walked in and I fixed her Apple computer and she kept staring at me. And I said, what, what do you keep looking at me for? She said, well, you have an interesting face. I said, so? She said, well, I'm a casting director. I said, so? I didn't even know what a casting director was. So she said, well, let's get you an agent. And she got me an agent and I started booking commercials. I was, I was a character actor for commercials, did a bunch of national commercials and then found out I could also do parts in movies and sitcoms and voiceover and, you know, kept a steady, uh, steady uh, career as a union actor. I mean, I didn't make it big in Hollywood, but who does, who does, but at the same time being such a competitive field, I was, I was very fortunate to, to have found steady work over the years that I did that. 
So um, that's that's uh, that's my story and on the acting and comedy field. That's just great, uh, truly. Uh, I have a, a I have a dear dear friend, Mike Marino, who lives out in L.A. and does some of those gigs out there, and he's also lives in Jersey. And and I've met uh, Mike Marino. You know him. Yeah, I know Mike. Yeah. Are you kidding? That is so funny. <laughs> that is. Boy, talk about. Uh, well, we've we've met. I mean, we're not officially friends, no, but we course. met a number of times. You know. Uh, I uh, I met Mike Marino at the first annual Asbury Park Comedy Festival ten years ago, and and they were um, they were raising money um, uh, to give to Lenny's uh, house, uh, Lenny Bruce's daughter Kitty. Uh, had set up a house for uh, abused and, and addicted women and this first annual and so Mike Marino hosted it in Asbury Park 10 years ago it was the beginning of my journalism career and, and I went to cover it and, and afterwards we, we took a picture uh, him and I outside and it was like instant chemistry and we went on to become so I've probably seen him perform 50 times and, and it's just what I do and, and I love his observational comedy yeah. that's what he calls yeah, he's it. good he's just great and and i have to tell him what a small world um so the other thing i i, I wanted uh uh so you had met some people uh, out there that eventually uh not eventually but they went to tanzania uh, yeah i i hooked up with uh, uh mark victor hansen and a few if you people Google Mark Victor Hansel, they'll find out he's co-author um, uh, along with Jack Canfield uh, for the very successful Chicken Soup for the Soul series, which is actually in the Guinness Book of Records as the most books ever sold on the planet. Yeah. So he was a very successful businessman, uh, extremely nice man. And, and I joined his group of entrepreneurs and uh, for a year and we went to different places, Atlanta, Hawaii, uh, he has a beautiful house there and uh, did some conferences with him. And then we, we decided to trek to Africa, did a beautiful safari in Kenya, which was amazing. And then we went over to Tanzania next, next door and uh, climbed to the top of Mount Kilimanjaro. It was uh, just an amazing experience. I can't even, uh, I can't even process that to have done that. It, it is like, uh, now I've been to Sedona uh, twelve times. It's not Kilimanjaro, and and I've been there uh, twelve times because I discovered twenty years ago that it's a very spiritual place. Yeah, and and um, so I've been uh, twelve times, and it's interesting. It's interesting because our first time there it must have been 20, 25 years ago. Uh, I, we had a national sales meeting there and I took a day off and my wife and I and my little baby boy, uh, who's going to be a daddy in three weeks, um, we, we drove to Sedona and, and as we were driving into Sedona, and I knew it was a spiritual place, New Age, which right. is part, that's part of who you yeah. are. And it's the funniest thing, because as we were driving in off the main road, it's a little road, and you don't really see the Red Mountains uh, until you get really close. And and as we were driving in, there was a, a red pile of red dirt. There was a pile of red dirt. Uh, and and I, I sometimes do crazy things. Uh, and, and I stopped the car abruptly, and I jumped out. My wife said, what happened? Where are you going? I said, I'll be right back. And I jumped into the dirt. And, mm. and I took the dirt and I rubbed it all over myself. Wow. Because I, I, I didn't know what the hell I was doing, uh, actually. But that's what I was doing. I, was, I wanted to absorb as much uh, energy uh, as I could, if in fact it existed. And um, I do that with Pamela Anderson's clothing. Well, <laughs> that's funny. That's funny. Uh, and, and that began... Uh, 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 a long journey for me, uh, you know, in my first novel, there's a, a picture uh, of me sitting barefoot uh, on one of the vortexes in Sedona. And, and uh, I bought, a, I bought uh, Native American music 
I bought an album there 25 years ago uh, called Tear of the Moon. And, and whenever I, uh, and I'm crazy, not crazy, crazy, but I would listen to it and, and there was something inside me. And, and this is relevant, Marjeet. There was something inside me I couldn't explain. And, and, and every time I would listen to that music, it would make me want to go back to Sedona. So one night, I don't know, 20 years ago, whatever it was, I was listening to Tear of the Moon, that it's, it's ink in panpipes in Native American music. And, and I was listening to it, and um, my poor wife uh, out there, uh, she's Fine. had to endure so much. But anyway, I, I went into her, uh, into the kitchen there, and I said, forgive me, but I'm, I'm, I'm just going to fly to Sedona for a few days tomorrow. And she looked at me like I was crazy. And, and, and I went because of listening to that music. And uh, I went, I spent a few days there. I, I traveled around. I did the Vortexes. Uh, it, it, it was just, it was a wonderful experience for me to have uh, done that. Um, and interesting to, to, to kind of tie in some of the earlier things. Uh, I never could explain why I was drawn to um, that Native American experience because I'm a Jersey guy. I'm far from it. Uh, well, in this life, anyway. In this say. life, right. exactly. But, uh, and, and there's a place on the way up to Sedona called Montezuma's Castle. And, 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 and there, there was a tribe of Indians three or 400 years ago that lived there and then disappeared. And, and uh, I was, and when I go there, I, on the way to Sedona, I go there and I just, you know, meditate. And, and but uh, I, I did the 23 and Me uh, five or six or seven years ago, you know, the genetic testing. Uh, I did it for me and, and my son. I wanted him to have that. And, and I did it. And it came back. Um, um, and, and I know my roots, uh, they're Russian. Um, uh, you know, my grandparents are from Russia. I know that. Uh, but it came back that I had a Native American ancestor. Uh, and, and that was inexplicable because I, I couldn't, and there was nobody to ask. My parents are gone and there was right. nobody to ask. But uh, so there was Native American inside me. And maybe in part, that explained this fascination. I, I, and it was a strong fascination which you can identify with. Well, I mean, a lot of your listeners have probably been to places uh, around the world that they visited or they've had an inclination to visit a particular place. And when they've got there, they go, I know I've been there. I, I know this place. Yeah. And uh, these are, when, when in this particular life, we're drawn to different places. Um, because we can recollect, our subconscious can recollect, sometimes we don't remember, but our subconscious can recollect uh, these places. And, and when we go there, uh, I know my sister, she went to Machu uh, Picchu in sure. uh, per Peru. Right. Uh, she was drawn there. And when she got there, she, 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 she knew she'd been there before. So uh, again, another uh, strong evidence of reincarnation. And uh, I, I keep bringing reincarnation up because uh, did, you, did you know that the, the, Christ, the Christian scholars are coming up now saying, based on their own research, that the uh, Christian church actually uh, st stopped uh, teaching reincarnation uh, a few hundred years back. It was actually taught in the Christian wow. religion. And so, you know, and they suppressed it and they bought this one life uh, business to control the masses and that's coming out now as well so I think it's in, again based on that experience you had in Sedona uh, based on um, you know the, the recollection of of, of of being comfortable in a Native American environment that 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 is not unusual that's that's normal these are things that are normal things that people think are unusual but um, it's it's so important now especially in these days to you know th this it, it explains the inequality why is why is somebody born rich why is somebody born poor why is a child born with cancer and another 
he's a you know piano uh, virtuoso at the age of three and and so these are all recollections from a past life and so the more we understand that and the more then we realize like you and I and many of your listeners realize that we are all one race we just come back in different bodies right. even we may even come back as a woman uh, in order to you know or a, or a woman may come back as a man you know we come back as a dark race as a light race as a as a jew as a muslim i mean we need all those experiences in order to under, in order to evolve and, and ultimately uh, raise our consciousness back to that particular source that we originally came from and so um that again that's a truth that needs to be propounded and 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 you again you know explained it just so brilliantly based on on your on the experience that you had so i totally agree with what you what you're going you know through. the other interesting thing you said wajid when uh when i got back from sedona um and, and i rubbed the dirt uh and then i flew out now i've been there like i said 12 times but one of the early uh side effects of my having been there and, and I write about this, uh, is I have this unexplainable feeling of deja vu at times. Yeah, right. Uh, I could be driving by, and I write about this, uh, I could be driving by a farmhouse and, and I slow down and I stop and I look at it and, and I could swear I'd been there before. And it's all over me. Uh, of course, now I haven't left my house in 14 months because of the pandemic, so I don't, um, but in the good times, I, in, in, at the most, at the most uh, remote places and, and times and things, I would just stop and, you know, take a couple of deep breaths and say, I, I, I've been here. Yeah, yeah. When I haven't, but I, I guess I have. It's, it's really fascinating uh and, and that's what's drawn me to you your your background your journey the things you say um and 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 in kind of uh, just to kind of wrap to do a little bit of a wrap for this uh, episode because we can do more um um but uh I, i'm i'm uh uh you're an environmentalist and, and so am i and and i've been one since april 22nd 1970 when I was a young kid and, and I went to the first Earth Day and I realized, I realized how important the planet is. We're living in the Garden of Eden, basically, and we just yes. don't really realize it. And we're abusing. Yes. We're abusing. And, and if we don't, uh, and we are one species, and if we don't work together quickly and stop doing the things we're doing, because uh, it doesn't mean anything, we, this is our home. You know, we ain't going to Mars and we ain't going to Venus. This is our home. And if we don't fix it really quickly, uh, we just ain't going to have a home. So that's why I'm an environmentalist and, and you're an environmentalist along those same, you know, pathways. Well, again, what, what the world needs to understand that the media doesn't talk about, which the media needs to talk about, and uh, your outlet and other outlets like yours are talking about is the fact that we actually live on a not only a, a beautiful earth. We live on a, actually a very highly spiritual, evolved uh, goddess, which is actually within the earth, a living being, which the indigenous tribes of North America, Africa, Australia, you know, uh, South America. I mean, they they've all known uh, of the existence of Mother Earth, and so we're actually doing a crime against this planetary goddess of all the millions of years we've raped her of her resources, polluted her atmosphere. And, and you know, we, we're actually cause, uh, causing, it's, it's a cosmic crime that we're doing. It's bad enough that we blew up our own planet and now we're destroying this one. But the, the, the point will arrive where eventually uh, those who don't want to conform to mother nature, uh, who don't want to raise their vibrations eventually they're going to be taken off and, and be reincarnated incarnated to another planet because she is raising her vibrations every year. That's also part of the climate change. And so we need to be a, 
again the planet the planet people of this planet need to be aware that we live a, a dr king said that he said the most sacred most holy being you will ever touch in all your lives is the ground beneath your feet and once that realization starts dawning that we do live on this goddess who's given us a refuge so in space um that again on top of reincarnation are truths that need to be uh, propounded in these uh let's face it not too good days these are very tough times on planet tough earth times, right now tough times and, and we are i'm watching a, a documentary i watch so many uh um i watch cowspiracy about the beef industry i'm now watching seaspiracy about what's going on in the oceans uh, i cannot believe what we're the amount of fish and dolphins and whales that we're killing. And, and I never knew this, uh, but whales are part of the, the chain of life and they give birth uh, to, to plankton, which gives birth to 75% 75, 75 of the oxygen of this planet. And we're killing all that stuff. Uh, um, What's happening in Brazil? It's terrible. Yep, you know? the rainforest. Uh, I mean, uh, um, I, 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 uh, I always love to believe that that Generation Z uh, and the young people uh, are, are going to uh, kind of march and, and, and really awaken and, and, and kind of change things around, uh, uh, hopefully uh, in time. I, I watch a, a, another documentary. I mean, these are things I, I don't know. I, I, you know, there's so many things I don't know that we don't know that it's out there. But I, I didn't realize that there's about 3 billion people on this planet who don't uh, have toilets. You know, we don't think twice. Uh, uh, right. There's 3 billion people who don't have. Uh, and actually, to Bill Gates' credit, uh, uh, he, he's been funding companies that, uh, I mean, this is just amazing stuff. Uh, I watched a documentary on the mind of Bill Gates on, on Netflix. And, and he's working with a company, companies to try to develop toilets for third world countries that work from solar power. So they, you flush it, the solar power, the, the purification and, and all the, I mean, it's beyond my comprehension, but the end product, uh, as he put in a, a cup of water, a glass of water, he put in a glass and filled it up from the toilet and then drank it because it was purified. And that's wonderful. So that's, human innovation which makes you know uh, well you see that's the mindset that needs to be changed um the greatest minds on this planet uh the greatest scientific minds are 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 directed towards the destruction of the race and not the and not the preservation of the race and so um science now needs that spiritual angle of compassion uh of upliftment uh and needs to be transmuted into something more compassionate and not make the latest, you know, uh, atomic bomb or, yeah. or, or whatever. And, you know, these, uh, these scientists, are, you know, that's what they're, they're bent on is making, making more and more weaponry, sophisticated weaponry when they should, their mind should be working on things like helping the, uh, helping preserve Hunger. and uplift. Yeah, hunger, the and basic healthcare things. things that we take. I just interviewed. Um, actually, it's going up Wednesday. Uh, this wonderful man in the Cameroon. Uh, uh, he is trying to raise funds to build some simple little health centers in the rural parts of the Cameroon. Uh, Chinje is his name, uh, um, because the the healthcare in in the remote areas of this country is non-existent. So he wants to help children uh, and women and, and the disabled with little health centers. And, you know, it, it, for us, it's a couple of pennies, a dollar here, a dollar there, and, and it can help. I mean, this is, we just, you know, and, and, and then I see the visuals of, of the hunger in, in parts of Africa, and I can't comprehend that. And how do we, that's the title of my series, Conversation with Calvin, We the Species, how do we as a species allow a child to go to sleep hungry? Right. I, I don't, I, I, I you know, uh, it's beyond, uh, and uh, it's beyond, how do we allow that in this day and age? How does the world 
allow that. The world has allowed a lot right. of bad things right. in, in our lifetimes. And, and, and this is just a terrible... So, you know, it's... Uh, well, there's a lot of stuff here uh, that we've touched. Uh, and um, it's probably a good time to uh, untouch and, and, uh, and for me to invite you back anytime to talk, just, just to chat. I mean, uh, there's so much... Uh, we didn't get to, but we will. And and uh, Rajid, uh, you made my day and you made my week. And I'm so grateful to the spirits and the energies uh, and the exigencies of the universe, how it brought us together. Uh, that's pure gratitude. Well, it's a real pleasure, Calvin, and uh, definitely would like to come back and, uh, uh, you know, love that. Uh, reconnect and continue our talk yep, I um, love that. but i just want to end and let the listeners know that there is light at the end of the tunnel there is a spiritual renaissance occurring the next revolution is going to be a mental revol mental peaceful revolution bloodless revolution and that's what we're heading towards now mm -hmm. no matter what how bad the situation looks there is light at the end of the tunnel and struggle for world sanity uh it, it's a couple hour read uh, and it's so fascinating, your journey. So um, I, I ordered from Amazon. I sat and, and in a couple of hours, I'm going to be done. And it's a great read. So um, to be continued, Wajid, thank you so much for being here. Um, and Thanks, Calvin. Please do come pleasure. back. Thank you.